You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Friday, the 22nd of June. Seven former Labour ministers selected for police chief elections. Elderly patients help to die to free up beds, warns doctor. The ringleader of a Muslim paedophile grooming gang has been jailed for 19 years. From the belly of the beast with Nick Griffin, MEP. Muslim Brotherhood warns Egypt's generals. Prosecutors in Norway call for brave insanity verdict. Thought for the day, the flash demo in Fairham in support of Mrs Walker, and finally, the man who died laughing at goodies had long QT syndrome. UK News. Seven former Labour ministers, some of whom have had to repay money in the MP's expenses scandal, have been chosen to stand in the first elections for police chiefs. The opposition party does not support the creation of police and crime commissioners, claiming the £100 million being spent on the initiative will be better used recruiting 3,000 new constables but it is putting up candidates for the elections in 41 force areas in November regardless, saying that they will stand up for communities against government cuts of up to 20% in policing budgets. Labour candidates will fight the impact of these reckless changes, working within the local communities to bring about the changes people want. Nick Herbert, the police minister, said, Labour's whole approach to police and crime commissioners is confused and hypocritical. They oppose the greater accountability PCCs will bring, but are asking the public to support Labour candidates. They say they will use the elections to oppose police cuts, but they would be cutting the police if they were in government. Elderly patients help to die to free up beds, warns doctor. Professor Patrick Pulicino warns NHS hospitals are using care pathway designed to help make people's final days more comfortable as an equivalent to euthanasia. The professor claims some patients put on the Liverpool care pathway could live longer, but are put on the care pathway because they are difficult to look after and take up valuable beds. On the care pathway, patients are sedated as treatment, food and water are withdrawn. 130,000 patients a year die in hospital while on the care pathway. A World Date reporter commented, it should be renamed Clear Pathway. It is slow starvation, and I mean slow, unless sedation is increased to virtually erase life quickly. When I am very elderly and infirm, I will have tattooed on my forehead K-A-A-W-G-S. Keep alive at whatever cost and get stuffed. The ringleader of a Muslim paedophile grooming gang has been jailed for the rapes of 30 British children. The 59-year-old paedophile, not named at first when he was on trial in Liverpool earlier this year, but has now been named as Shabir Ahmed. Ahmed is now behind bars with a 19-year jail sentence around his neck. Manchester Crown Court had heard that he constantly raped one girl for more than a decade. The court also heard he was a violent man who raped children as young as 13 years old. Now the Euro news, not from the belly of the beast today, but from Cumbria, where Nick has been attending to a family matter this week. I give you Nick Griffin, MEP. This week's dispatch comes not from the Brussels belly of the beast, but from one of the loveliest parts of my huge northwest of England constituency, Cumbria. On the subject of family relationships, wasn't it great to see Marion Le Pen, Jean-Marie's granddaughter, become the youngest ever MP in France? It's a source of some regret to me that my French and Jean-Marie's English are both sufficiently limited that they can't really communicate beyond, beyond pleasantries, except through an interpreter. He really is the grand old man of European nationalism, and it's an honour to sit and vote near him as a member of the European Parliament. It was Jean-Marie Le Pen who, in a speech including the exhortation Nationalists of Europe Unite, first proposed the formation of an alliance of the national parties of Europe, although it took some years until the right people joined him in Brussels to make it happen. And right now, things are moving forward apace. I met in Chester earlier this week with the overseas relations officer of the Spanish Platform for Freedom. After decades of chronic division and decline in the nationalist movement in Spain, the Platform for Freedom, which has started out as Plataforma Catalonia, but which has recently become a nationwide party, has already grown to 67 elected councillors and has a real chance of entering both the Catalan and European parliaments the next time around. Following our meeting, the Spanish Freedom Platform have confirmed that they will be attending the formal launch meeting of the Alliance of European National Movements in Milan on July the 7th. I would of course be there too, and will bring you more news from there, and from other Alliance events that are also going ahead over the next month or so. 
Our new Spanish comrades have a similarly sensible radical manifesto to our own, and I was very pleased to discover are as committed as we are to resisting the coordinated attempts going on right now all across Europe to break the genuine nationalist parties and replace them with neocon puppets in the pockets of the mega-rich supporters of the most extreme Greater Israel Wing of the Zionist movement. As it happens, I've come to the conclusion that the possible future collapse of the Israeli state would be bad for Britain as well as for Israeli Jews. First, because it would mean large numbers of them would end up here as refugees, and second, because such a victory would set the Muslim world alight with fantasies of invincibility and feed their imperialistic, barking mad belief that their recycled moon god wants them to conquer the entire world. So I want to see Israel survive as a viable Jewish homeland. Every people, the Jews, Palestinians and the British alike, are entitled to their own. Though I think they should at least try to trade land for something like peace, but that's their business. And I have to say that the central role now being played by right-wing Jewish intellectuals and campaigners in the effort by the counter-jihad movement to wake the peoples of the West to the mortal danger posed to our civilization and freedoms by creeping Islamification is a huge improvement on the previous heavy involvement of left-wing Jewish intellectuals in the Frankfurt School and related efforts to subvert and destroy our culture and identity. But there's a world of difference between valuing the counter-jihad movement and recognizing Israel's right to exist on the one hand, and on the other accepting the relentless ultra-Zionist use of media and money power to bully, bribe and blackmail the politicians and nations of the West into fighting wars on behalf of the neo-fascist end of the Israeli political spectrum. Iraq, Afghanistan, the bombing of Libya, the meddling in Syria, and the planned war against Iran, not one of these neocon operations, which incidentally are also backed by the Muslim crisis in Saudi Arabia, has anything to do with Britain or British interests. And anyone who tries to tell you otherwise or fudge this issue is not a British nationalist, a defender of England, or a friend of our people. Finally, back on the home front, I've just finished writing the Chairman's report to accompany the British National Party's 2011 accounts, which have been with the Auditor for several months and are now set to be submitted on time to the Electoral Commission. They will be published on the Commission website towards the end of July, and all the scribblers and media hacks who are so keen to write us off on the back of the 2010 accounts will have to eat their words as they see how we turned around that year's £400,000 operating loss into a very healthy operating surplus of £214,000 last year. On top of that, the first stage payment from a very significant request has cleared into our main account just this week, so I'm sure you'll be delighted to know that the party's financial crisis is definitely over, and the decks are cleared for action. As I conclude at the end of the report, we haven't gone away, you know. World News. Muslim Brotherhood warns Egypt's generals. Islamic group claims victory in elections and threatens to flood streets if military continues to rebuild old regime. The Muslim Brotherhood has vowed to face down Egypt's ruling generals in a life-or-death struggle over the country's political future, after declaring that its candidate had won the presidential election and would refuse to accept the junta's last-ditch attempts to engineer a constitutional coup. Chants of God is great and down with military rule rang out and supporters spilled out into the streets to celebrate. Prosecutors in Norway call for Breivik insanity verdict. It has been reported that prosecutors in Norway have called for self-confessed mass killer Anders Bering Breivik to be considered insane in their closing argument at his trial. Prosecutor Sven Holden said that there were still doubts about his insanity, but he should be placed in psychiatric care, not sent to prison. The judges in the trial in Oslo are due to deliver their verdict in the trial in July or August. Brevik killed 77 people and injured 242 on the 22nd of July last year. He also bombed government buildings in Oslo before shooting young multi-ethnic Labour Party supporters at their island training camp. Brevik has justified his attacks by saying they were necessary to stop the Islamization of Norway. The defence concludes on Friday. Thought for the day, the flash demo in Fairham for Mrs Walker. Well, I come fresh from a magistrate's court in Fairham, where Margaret Walker has had an adjournment granted and an interim ASBO given to her. This interim ASBO will hold against her until the 20th of July, when another court case will be held. Now, I'm not talking about yobs that destroy cars and lives, not talking about mentally ill immigrants who grace our streets, 
not black gangs or generally anybody who warrants an ASBO. I'm talking about a 73-year-old lady who feels very strongly about her country and the plight of her people. The Charlene Downs case and the publicity we gave it affected her so much she went into print. Although I will not talk about the case specifically because of the legal aspects, she posted copies of self-made leaflets through the post to various hand-picked people. She deliberately avoided Muslims and ethnics and concentrated on non-ethnic staff at councils, a pub and M&S, I believe. The complaints have come in from one pub owner and the other three are from council employees from the back of beyond. The reasons why they reported her leaflets to the police are weak, to say the least. Being shocked, the main one. Another one is that Mrs Walker's leaflet ruined her Jubilee weekend. I will go into greater detail at a later date after July the 20th. The police, of course, are in their element. Re references to Muslim groomers have really wakened up the CPS, who, of course, is mainly staffed by our ethnic friends now anyway. It must be a liberal and hypocritical action, taking an old lady to court, for what, after all, is her human right to object to something she feels strongly about. Mrs Walker does not deny she wrote and posted the leaflets. Her point is that she was trying to bring the problem of Muslim groomers, and especially the Charlene Downs case, into public view, something, obviously, one must not do. Now, we had a good turnout, and the surprising thing was we had representatives from the EDL, the National Front, the British Freedom Party, and, of course, the British National Party, all supporting Profan, which has been set up to protect the family. It is a non-political movement, and all are welcome. In fact, all are encouraged to stand by us and attend because despite the differences many feel stand between various factions of the nationalist movement, we are all nationalists. When push comes to shove, my friends, everyone will have to choose. No fences. You will either be with us on the right or with the morons on the left. There will be no room for the liberals or the ignorant or the ones who simply wish everything would just go away. Profan welcomes all to its folds and we have many battles to fight together. We must produce a show of force and sheer numbers on July the 20th. We nationalists must show that the establishment have not won and decimated nationalism in England today. Only by bums on seats will we do that. To the brave today, I take off my hat. Karen Downs herself came down from the north and we had representatives from Sheffield. Gavin Miller, our Hampshire SRO, did a sterling job in organising at such short notice. After court, we went on to a meeting where food was laid on free by a marvellous, marvellous landlord, and speeches were made. Now, I will say that despite the good turnout, which was aided by our other nationalist friends, where was the large Hampshire British National Party membership? Allowing for petrol, work, illness, and even football, I'm sure more could have made the effort to support Margaret Walker. I hope that July the 20th brings more than just apathy, but a swell of people. The authorities are like children. If they see something that appears weak, they will ignore it. If they see a strong, united people, they start to think. That is what we want. We want the establishment to think why the Charlene Downs case has been swept under the carpet. Why has it taken years to listen to Nick Griffin? Why are the English too gutless when it comes to being colonised, when they fight to the death over losing wars? If Charlene had been Muslim or black, her mother, Karen Downs, would have been lauded and paraded around like a prize poodle. Who can forget Stephen Lawrence, although I personally wish we could? No chance there. He was black. His supposed killers were white. No contest. Stephen has assumed sainthood, and his divorced parents likewise. They have been backed and heavily funded by the media and black organisations to carry on the myth, even though many more ethnic on white killings have occurred since then. Muslim grooming has been going on for as long as the buggers have been in this country. If Karen Downs had the backing of her people and her government, she would have been funded to proceed with a private lawsuit, as the Lawrences were, time and time again. And Charlene's murderers would have been paying their dues now, not setting up new kebab shops with blood money, and probably still in the grooming business. The police, the British people, the judiciary and big business have let down a woman who has lost her child in the most awful circumstances and does not have the means to get justice because justice, apparently, if you are white, costs money, and a hell of a lot of it. Who will finance a private prosecution? Shall we call on the Muslim community to fund it, since they are, in this case, the perpetrators? Shall we call on a vast, mythical fund, only open to white people for shekels? Shall we ask the Lawrences if they will participate in helping another mother get justice? 
Shall we call on the papers to fund a story from Karen Downs which would enable her to start proceedings? Well, I can safely say that all of these options are pie in the sky. No one wants to publicise what has happened. It would offend too many people, namely the Muslim communities. What do I say? If I won the lottery, I would back a private prosecution and would not rest until those two Muslim scrotes were in jail or deported, preferably both, and their families. That is what I would do. But at the moment, I cannot. So poor Karen is left with few options, and Margaret Walker is paying the price. There is no freedom of speech for us Brits. But if we can stand united in July behind two brave women, Karen Downs and Margaret Walker, they have put their faith in Profan, and we will not let them down. And finally, man who died laughing at goodies had long QT syndrome. When Alex Mitchell collapsed and died while watching an episode of the goodies in 1975, the manner of his demise passed into comedy legend. It was reported at the time that the bricklayer from Kingsling, Norfolk, was said to have laughed so hard at the BBC sketch show that his heart gave out. Decades on, doctors have established that he really did die laughing. It has been reported in the Telegraph that cardiologists believe Mr Mitchell suffered from a rare heart rhythm disorder, long QT syndrome, which can induce cardiac arrest when triggered by exertion or adrenaline. They came to this conclusion after his granddaughter, Lisa Cork, was diagnosed with the syndrome. Mrs Cork, 23, suffered a cardiac arrest at her home last month, but was saved by her husband who administered CPR, which saved her life before the ambulance arrived. Once admitted to hospital, tests showed that long QT syndrome was hereditary on her father's side. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I and the team at Radio Britain wish you all a very happy and safe weekend.